Thank you to the American Philatelic Society for their support in the making of this video. For information on membership and APS services, visit stamps.org. Another Australian stem for the season, and again it's bringing up an interesting subject to explore. Two globes on either side of the stem represent the East and West Hemispheres, while centred between the two globes is what appears to be a running man wearing a winged helmet and holding a staff. The value of this dark lilac stamp was a shilling and sixpence, as this stamp was to be used for airmail. Even though it does not have the words airmail written anywhere, it could have been used for sending anything under half an ounce to a number of places around the world and this seems to be symbolized by the two hemispheres. There is a cancellation, just a friendly reminder to mail early in the day, and this stamp was issued back in 1934, measuring 36 by 26 millimeters. So this stamp caused me to read up on Mercury. No, not the planet Mercury, or project Mercury, or the element Mercury that has the symbol HG on the periodic table of the elements, or Freddie Mercury. No, what I'm talking about is the Roman god Mercury, who is depicted on this stamp and several other stamps around the world. So why does a Roman god get so much stamp love? Well, Mercury is a major god in Roman mythology, considered to be a multitasker because he is the god of commerce, financial gain, travelers, boundaries, thieves, trickery, luck. He serves as the guide of souls to the underworld, and he is also the god of communication and messages. Which brings us to why you'll find him somewhere in a stamp album, because he is a messenger for the gods, an overseer of communication, the perfect symbol for any postal service or act of relaying messages. So keep a lookout for symbols such as Mercury's caduceus, which is his staff, or a winged helmet and winged sandals. He actually has Greek roots. In earlier Greek mythology, there's a god named Hermes, who is a son of Zeus. And Hermes is essentially the same god as Mercury. Hermes also has the title of god of trade, thieves, travelers, and was the emissary and messenger of the gods, just like Mercury. And of course, fashions the same winged sandals and winged hat. Greece's first stamps issued in 1861 are known as the large Hermes heads. They appropriately feature their mythological messenger god with the winged hat, which is of course the perfect symbol for Greek stamps. And there have been plenty of Greek stamps that have been issued with the image of Hermes. Now, while Hermes is the son of Zeus, in Roman mythology, Mercury is the son of Jupiter. They're essentially the same god, but the Greeks had him first. So Greek stamps will feature Hermes, while most of the rest of the world seems to refer to him as Mercury. Now, hold up, a number of you are probably saying that I got it wrong, that the stamp I pulled from the box is actually Hermes, and that might be true. I've seen the stamp referred to as Hermes and the Globes online in forums as well as online stores, but I've also seen it referred to as Mercury and the Hemispheres, according to the Scott Catalogue and a number of other places. This Australian stamp also gets thrown around as Hermes and the Globe or Mercury and the Globe. And I don't believe any are wrong, I just think it might have something to do with who's portraying the image. For instance, this Greek stamp should depict Hermes because, well, it's Greek. The Australian stamp I pulled from the box has the exact same pose, but they're both modeled after a sculpture that is titled Mercury. It's a famous sculpture that was completed in Italy in 1580 by Gian Bologna. So the names seem to be used interchangeably. Now, speaking about sculptures, I'm actually familiar with the sculpture of Mercury that I've seen at a train station a few times. Well, at least I think it's Mercury. Let's go take a quick look. That is 
definitely Mercury. Behind me is Grand Central Terminal in New York City, one of the largest and busiest train stations in the world with over 40 platforms. And it's also known for its Beaux-Art design in which it has numerous works of art incorporated into its architecture, one of which is this sculpture, which is known as the Glory of Commerce. The sculpture features three Roman gods. On the left we see Hercules representing strength, on the right is Minerva, goddess of wisdom and protectress of cities, and in the center is Mercury, who in this case is not there for his messenger role, but rather as a symbol of his role as god of travel and commerce. Okay, I'll be honest, I didn't just make this trip to the train station to look at a statue. I also know of a pretty good bakery that's inside. So... Okay, so I found a number of stamps from countries all over the world that feature Hermes or Mercury, such as these ones from Brazil. In these, he has that Caduceus again. Here's an interesting one from Hungary where he's just standing, looks like he's holding a propeller. And here is a set of French stamps from 1938 depicting the god with the Caduceus. The Caduceus is like a wand or a staff with two snakes wrapped around it and the wings of Hermes or Mercury at the top. Because the Caduceus is associated with a god, it has been used to symbolize commerce and marketplace. And that's because Mercury is the god of commerce, as we saw in New York City with that statue, the glory of commerce. But it's also shown up as a symbol for healthcare and medicine. Especially in the United States, the Army Medical Branch adopted it as its symbol for medical officers. What's interesting is that the Caduceus really has nothing to do with health or medicine in mythology. It's the rod of Asclepius that is the correct symbol. In Greek mythology, the god Asclepius is associated with healing and medicinal arts. And it is the rod that Asclepius carries that is best associated with medicine. This rod just has one snake and at the top there are no wings. It is part of the World Health Organization's logo and countless other logos for hospitals, first aid and medical personnel. So it's been argued, especially in the United States, that Mercury's caduceus has been incorrectly used to symbolize healthcare. Okay, so that's the caduceus. Now, the winged helmet and winged sandals, known as the Pertussis and Teleria, are what makes the messenger god associated with speed and swiftness. They are usually the key indicators that you're looking at an image of Mercury or Hermes, especially the helmet, such as this set of newspaper stamps issued by Austria in 1920. When I see wings on a helmet, I think of a comic book character. Asterix. I grew up reading about the adventures of Asterix and Obelix. Asterix is a Gaul from 50 BC and his village is the last stronghold against Julius Caesar and the invading Roman Empire. Asterix and many of his villagers wear a helmet with wings on them just like Mercury. I actually think I have one somewhere. I, I really don't know why I have this, but wings on a helmet are associated with speed. And Gaul, which was a part of Western Europe at the time, was a really big believer in the god Mercury because of his connection with abundance and commercial success. Not the only comic book character that I've seen with wings on their head. What about Captain America? As well as the Flash. Well, recent versions of the Flash have lightning bolts on the head portion of the costume, but the original Golden Age Flash had a helmet very similar to Mercury's with wings, and also wings on his boots. Okay, so just to take us back to the set from Austria featuring Mercury's head, I found it interesting to learn that one of Austria's most famous stamps has a picture of Mercury's face on it. And just like these, it was a newspaper stamp. A newspaper stamp is a type of postage stamp that was used to pay for the cost of mailing a newspaper or other types of periodicals. They typically had a lower rate than the standard postage stamps at the time, and the concept was first used by Austria in 1851 with Mercury's image. Other countries soon followed, and collecting and studying of newspaper stamps is an active and fascinating aspect of philately. This Austrian newspaper stamp has the word Zeitungsstempel, meaning newspaper stamp. And instead of having any written value on the stamp, the color indicated the value. 
Blue was the lowest rate to send one newspaper and because of this it's the most common to find. There was a yellow for 10 newspapers and a rose one for 50 newspapers. But in 1856 there was a rate change and so a red one was printed. This red or scarlet one was used to send 10 newspapers and was soon replaced in 1858 with a completely different design. And as a result, there are very few red mercuries that exist today, making it a rare and valuable stamp. So keep an eye out for the red mercury stamp. There are plenty of forgeries, of course, so look out for those as well. One final thing to point out is that mercury has been associated with the Universal Postal Union, especially in stamps issued in the past celebrating the Union's anniversaries. The Universal Postal Union is an international organization that coordinates the global cooperation between all postal authorities. It was established in 1874 and members, which are almost all the countries in the world, must accept each other's postage stamps and allow mail from other member countries to pass in transit and be delivered. I found a few of the same British Commonwealth stamps celebrating the 75th anniversary of the Union, including Swaziland, Northern Rhodesia, Southern Rhodesia, Ascension. Well, two of the set of four feature Mercury as the messenger guard, but there are several other stamps out there featuring Mercury for the Universal Postal Union or just as a messenger of mail. So keep a lookout for this guard on your stamps. He might just be somewhere in your collection already. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so and check out the other videos from season 3 and the rest of the channel if you've missed any. As always, thank you for watching and happy exploring.